All right, so in this video, we'll be looking at feedback mechanisms. Um, we've talked about cellular transduction and are the signal transduction pathway and how cells communicate. And feedback mechanisms are examples of that kind of communication. And the way to think about feedback is that there's a product that is being made, right, that cellular response. And then that product is going to cause a further reaction. So the product is either going to cause the whole thing to be shut down or it's going to cause the whole thing to be made more of. And so we're going to look at two examples of feedback mechanisms. Um, organisms use feedback mechanisms to maintain their internal, internal environments to respond to external stimuli. Uh, and so as internal and external environments change, the body has to respond to that. And these feedback mechanisms allow for that response. It allows you to change your behavior in order to, in order to deal with that change. All right. And so there's some kind of stimulus there. There's a sensor that receives that stimulus. There's an evaluator. In our case, the evaluator is the brain, right? The brain evaluates the situation and then turns on some sort of thing. You um, eat a bunch of food. So your glucose goes up, the, um, the brain evaluates that situation and says, all right, our sugar is up. And then the brain tells the pancreas to release insulin, which causes blue blood glucose to go down. And that the brain reevaluates that situation and tells the pancreas to stop releasing insulin. That's a perfect example of a feedback loop. And so this idea is called homeostasis that the body is attempting to maintain a constant normal internal environment um, when we walk into a room and that room is cold we have a certain response to that usually we grab our arms and wrap ourselves up like this that is so that we we do it inherently without thinking about it but it decreases our overall surface area thus increasing our ability to retain heat body does that on purpose or if you're really cold you'll start shivering which is uh the body saying okay we're going to get the muscles working which increases uh cellular respiration which increases heat output uh from those reactions which causes you to warm up same sort of thing all right so there are two main feedback loops the first one's called negative feedback negative feedback is where the um the body is trying to maintain a particular set of conditioning conditions and they do this by regulating a process the, the examples that I've given you so far have been negative feedback loops uh, if the system is disruptive the 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 system is attempting to return itself back to that starting point all right the way that I think about this is that the product of this process turns off the process right if your body is cold then you shiver that is the product, right? And that will turn off, that will cause your body to reevaluate and say, okay, we're warm now, and it'll turn off the process. The same with sweating, the same with blood glucose, which I will use. I'll just point to that. Actually, I'll just go ahead and talk about that since we mentioned it already. If your blood glucose is too high, it releases insulin. The presence of insulin in the blood causes it to turn off and say no more insulin. If your blood sugar is too low, the pancreas releases glucagon. Glucagon raises blood sugar by causing blood cells to release glucose. Thus, the brain says, okay, it's good now. Turns off the pancreas. Uh, blood pressure is an example of negative feedback. When your blood pressure is really high, the brain says, okay, the blood pressure is high. We need to deal with this. It deals with this by sending a message to the kidney to say, all right, kidney, release some water. That causes you to need to go to the restroom, and you release water, lowering your blood pressure. If your blood pressure is too low, the it brain sends a message to the kidney. We need more blood pressure. The kidney says, okay, and retains water, keeps water in you instead, thus causing your blood pressure to increase, thus um, causing the, everything to return back to normal. That is that idea of a negative feedback. Positive feedback is the opposite of this. And I used this, I found this picture and I thought it interesting because it makes sense. Think of a stampede. One cow gets really panicked because it sees a snake, all right? It causes panic. It, you know, it wants to run. Well, the other cows are, cows are all prey species. They're big prey, but they're prey species. 
And they're like, well, if that cow's running, there obviously must be a good reason to run. And then they all start running. And then every cow looks and says, well, we need to run. And all of a sudden, the cows are just running because everybody's running. And so panic creates more running, creates more panic, creates more running. A positive feedback loop is where there's no turning off of the process. Eventually, it'll turn off because cows will just run out of energy. But you get the idea. And so we have these sorts of systems in our own bodies. Uh, uh, baby nursing is a great example of this. Uh, the the body will release uh, a chemical called prolactin, which causes milk production. The, the actual act of the baby eating causes the brain to say, okay, the baby's eating, release more milk, which causes more prolactin to be produced, which causes more baby eating, which causes more prolactin to be produced. And then there's this nice feedback loop. Uh, fruit ripening is a great example of this. Fruit produces a chemical called ethylene, which causes the fruit to ripen. As the fruit ripens, it produces more ethylene, which causes the fruit to ripen. Uh, you've probably heard that if you have fruit that needs to ripen a little bit more, if you put it in a bag, it will do that faster. The reason is, is because that ethylene is concentrated, not able to be released into the outside air, causing the fruit to ripen faster because it's just getting more ethylene. And so it will actually ripen faster. And so this is where the product of the process causes the process to occur more. And so very different than a negative feedback loop because it's keeping on that process. Eventually there is an end to that, but in general, this keeps a process going.